Whether you enjoy taking your Vita gaming experiences with you on the go, or you enjoy plugging them into the big screen TV for some HDMI gaming, this video's got you covered. I'll teach you how to play your favorite retro games on your Vita or PlayStation TV using RetroArch. Grab your jailbroken PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV and power it on. We're about to load it up with your favorite classic video games, and we're starting... We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. One of the most enjoyable things I've ever done in my gaming journey was learn how to write games and the music soundtracks for them. Check this. When I searched in Skillshare, they actually have a number of different courses for doing just that. And with classes just like this one that I like, you can learn how to write your own RPG games and get a skill today that you didn't have yesterday. There are no ads and they're always adding new classes so that you can follow your creativity wherever it takes you. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare Premium. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. To install RetroArch on your PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV, there are two files you need to get from the RetroArch website linked in the description below. The first one is just labeled download and that's retroarch.vpk. It's the installer. You'll also need the data files, which I'll show you how to deal with in just a moment. Go ahead and click on both to download them. Navigate to your downloads folder and you'll find the two files you downloaded. I also have a ROMs folder here that I've already pre-configured. Inside this folder, I have each system separate and I have a ROM included in each one of these in zip format and you can keep your ROMs in zip format as RetroArch for Vita will be able to read them. If you go ahead and set those up ahead of time, it will make your life easier as you can copy everything over at one time. Extract the files for the RetroArch data folder that you downloaded then delete the compressed file to eliminate clutter out of the downloads folder. My goal is to eliminate as much swapping as possible between the Vita and the PC, so let's make this a one-stop swap. Open Vita Shell from your live area, then tap it or select it with X to launch it. Then connect your device either by USB or FTP and press the select button to initiate the connection. In this instance, I've connected a Vita 1000 by USB. The downloads folder is represented in the folder on the left from File Explorer and the Vita's memory card is represented in File Explorer in the window on the right. At this point, you can copy everything in the Downloads folder all at one time. Select it all and pick Copy. Then you can navigate to the root of the Vita storage. In this case, it's represented here by USB, and then paste everything right on the root of the Vita storage. Once everything is copied over, and it may take several minutes, you're done with the PC. You can close out File Explorer, and transitioned over to your PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV. Back in Vita Shell, disconnect your device from your PC. In the list of partitions, scroll down to UX0 and select it with the X button. You'll need to install the RetroArch.vpk file, and it's probably listed all the way at the bottom of the list of files and folders that you have. You can just dive bomb down to the bottom with the D-pad until you see RetroArch.vpk. Select it with the X button, and then select X to confirm. Then when prompted for permissions, select Yes with X. This process takes about six minutes in real time. Just be patient, grab yourself your favorite beverage, and it'll be done shortly. Now you can delete the RetroArch.vpk file as you don't need it on your storage any longer. Make sure you're highlighted on RetroArch.vpk, press the triangle button, scroll down with the D-pad to delete, and select it with the X button. When prompted, select Yes with the X button to delete the VPK file. We'll come back to Vita Shell in just a moment to deal with the RetroArch data folder as RetroArch needs to run first to establish some key folders. Close out Vita Shell by pressing the PlayStation button and then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold the circle button to go back to the live area. And on your live area, you'll find RetroArch shaking booty while the band complains. Go ahead and launch RetroArch for the first time. Scroll down to it with the cursor, select it with the X button or tap to select it and then tap or select with X to launch RetroArch. The first time RetroArch launches, it sets up key files and folders that it requires as seen here. First order of business with your Vita or PlayStation TV connected to the internet is to scroll down until you get to Online Updater. Select it with the circle button as Circle and X are reversed inside RetroArch. You'll need to update assets online for RetroArch to take full advantage of all of its capabilities. 
Scroll down with the D-pad until you get to Update Assets and select it with the circle button. Now you can go top off that drink that you just got because this process takes about 12 minutes to complete. Just leave it be to do its thing until it's finished. When it's done, you can update cheats, which takes about 45 minutes, and hey, no judgments. Then scroll down to update overlays and select that with the circle button to do the overlay update. And this next step is optional, but recommended. Scroll down until you get to on-demand thumbnail updates and turn it on. The X button will take you back to the main menu. At this point, you can close out RetroArch as there's other work to do inside Fetus Shell. Scroll down to the bottom to quit RetroArch, select it with circle, and then swipe down from the right corner or press and hold circle to go back to the library. Let's go back in VitaShell to deal with that RetroArch data folder. Select VitaShell from the library, then tap or select with X to launch it. Once you're inside VitaShell, you'll be back in the main directory for the UX0 partition. Use the D-pad to move the highlighter until you see the folder called RetroArch Data, select it with X, then navigate down to the RetroArch folder and select it with X. You'll need to select everything you see in this folder, and the easiest way to do that is move the highlight down with the D-pad, press the triangle button, then select Mark All with the X button. And you'll need to copy all of this. Press the triangle button, then move the highlighter to select Copy, and press X to select Copy. You'll get a confirmation message into the center of the screen. Press X for OK to continue. Press the circle button to go back, then press circle again. You'll need to navigate to the data folder this time. Use the D-pad to move the highlighter to data and select it with the X button. Once you get inside this folder, you're going to see a folder called RetroArch in here, and that folder would not have been present had you not run RetroArch previously. And that's exactly why we did that. Use the D-pad to navigate down to the folder that says RetroArch and select it with the X button. Once inside this folder, you'll need to paste everything that you copied from the RetroArch data folder. To do that, press the triangle button for the advanced menu, then select paste with the X button to continue. And if you were topping off your sodas before, now's a good time to grab a full lunch because it takes quite a while for this stuff to copy over. I actually lost count of how long it was, but it was probably about 20 to 25 minutes. Once the pasting of those folders is complete, you can actually go back and delete the RetroArch data folder because it takes up a lot of space and there's no need to waste the precious space on your storage. Press the circle button to go back to the main level of the UX0 partition, select the RetroArch data folder, then press triangle for the advanced menu. Navigate to delete with the D-pad and select it with the X button. Then press the X button to confirm deletion, which should only take a couple of minutes. Once those folders are deleted and all of that precious space on your storage is restored, you are done with Vita Shell. Press the PlayStation button on your Vita, then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold circle to go back to the live area. Now you can go back into RetroArch. Select it from the live area by navigating the cursor down and pressing the X button or tapping. And then once that's loaded up, select the X button or tap to launch RetroArch again. This menu setup is okay and all, but we can do better by adding the familiar cross media bar to RetroArch. Use the D-pad to navigate over to the left navigation pane to settings, then come back over to the right and scroll down until you see the listing for user interface. Then press the circle button to select it. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to menu and select it with circle. From here, scroll down to the choice that says XMB for cross media bar and select it with the circle button. For these settings to take effect, you'll have to restart RetroArch again. Navigate back to the main menu, then scroll all the way down to the bottom for quit RetroArch and select it with the circle button to quit. This time though, once you quit RetroArch, you can just go back to the area where you have the option to restart it and just press X to go right back into it. And this time when RetroArch launches, it'll have the cross media bar that we're all familiar with. Let's get those games that you put on your storage for your Vita or PlayStation TV recognized by RetroArch. Scroll over through the cross media bar until you see the plus button at the top, then select scan directory with the circle button. In the list of locations, scroll down until you see the UX0 partition and select it with the circle button. In the list of folders, scroll down until you see the ROMs folder that you copied over to your device storage, then select it with the circle button. Then scroll down with the D-pad to scan this directory and press the circle button. Depending upon the number of ROMs that you copied over to your device, this could take just a few moments or quite some time. 
but since there's only three ROMs representing three systems, this goes pretty quickly. Once it's done, when you go back to the cross media bar by pressing the X button, what you'll find is each of those systems are going to be represented now on the cross media bar. So for example, here's the Nintendo NES and the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis neighboring it there on the cross media bar. Very cool. But as you notice, none of the artwork is showing up yet. Let's get that fixed. Scroll over to the left until you see the settings double gear icon next to the RetroArch icon. In the list of choices from the drop down here, scroll down until you see a listing called User Interface, then select User Interface with the circle button. In the list of choices, scroll down to the one that says Appearance and select it with the circle button. From here, scroll down through the choices until you see a listing called Left Thumbnail. It's turned off by default and you'll want to turn this on and select what you want to see to the left of the menu for your art. In this case, select it with the circle button and I'm going to use box art. Select the one that you want and then you can press the X button to go back. Now when you scroll back over to the playlist at the top of the cross media bar, you'll see that not only are the games represented, but their box art is now represented. Very cool. In the days of not so long ago, you had to go to load core and do that process manually before you started playing a game. But RetroArch is more intuitive these days. Pick the game that you want to play with the circle button. It will suggest to you several different cores that you could use that will match the type of ROM that you've selected. In this case, since it's Super Nintendo and Super Mario World, it's already defaulted to some key Super Nintendo emulators. I'm going to use this core right here as it's the most recent one, 2010. Press circle for the core you want, and then press circle to run your game. And in no time at all, you'll be playing your favorite retro games on your PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV. But why stop there when there's so much more that you can do to enjoy your system? Check out this video here, shown on screen in the desktop browsing experience, and linked in the pinned comment and description below for more great Vita content.